Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Namaste. It's Thursday morning, and we are called to realize who we are, that we are right now instruments of peace. That's going to be what we talk about today. Not make me an instrument of your peace, but I am an instrument of your peace. This is the critical and most important step to become that which we are seeking. Not to ask to be something, because to ask to be something, anything, means that I'm denying that I am that. If I'm saying, Lord, please make me an instrument of your peace, what we're really saying is I am not what I choose to be. As opposed to accepting ourselves as we are accepted by God, that I am an instrument of peace right here, right now. That is the foundation of my very nature. And I am choosing to know that. I am choosing to express that. In a little while, I'm going to share a video with all of you that is from a song that I recorded with another singer many years ago, probably 12 years ago, actually. And yet, last night I made a video for it because I just love this song. I, I love this version of it, but I think it's going to guide us into this experience even more of realizing that I am already, this moment, always an instrument of peace. I am the instrument that surrenders into the arms of the beloved and the strings of my heart begin to vibrate and music fills the air. What other reason would I be here? What other reason is there to be alive? But in order to know this, in order to allow this, there is, there are a few steps. Because in our minds, in our perceptual experience, we seem to be separated from who we really are and where we really are and that state of oneness. Now, the truth is that's impossible. Of course, Miracle says there's only one problem and one solution. You think that you are separate from God and from everything else. The answer or the solution is you're wrong. It's not possible. You are who you are. You are whole and perfect as you were created. But it's this experience, not just the idea. It's the experience that we are here to embrace and to know and to share. And so it begins always, as we've said many, many times before, but there's really not much we say in these sessions that we don't say over and over again, because the whole idea is for us to just keep coming at it from different angles so that it finally becomes so compelling that there's nothing else we can do but fall into this ocean of grace. So when I say that the key to this is your desire, how many times have you heard that? How many times have, have you heard of, in different ways that you have to want this with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul? Isn't this what all the great enlightened ones say, beginning with Jesus? Well, it actually begins with the, in the Old Testament with the Ten Commandments. But when Jesus was asked, what is the first and greatest? He said, you shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul. Not half, not most, not almost all, but wholly, completely. You have to seek that. You have to desire that. You have to want that experience of union. This is the key. So I, I just, right before we started, I wrote down what seemed to me to be the three steps to experiencing anything, really, especially this state of oneness that is inherent and true within each one of us. So the three steps are want. You have to want it or desire it. You have to have a, a strong and overwhelming desire. Number two is you have to seek it. You have to be trying, you have to be making the effort to have that experience. And number three, you have to merge or become that. And it's just like any other thing, like a romantic relationship. You have to want someone. If there's someone that, that, that you have a spark with, you have to want them or desire them. 
if if you have that now you have to seek them especially if you're a man you need to woo the woman and then finally there's that merging that that coming together and this is all we're talking about with our experience with who we are i could say it's our experience with god or it's our experience with with ultimate reality or whatever we want to call it but really it's just the longing for the truth of who i am the longing for the truth of who i am and have always been which is one with god which is one with everything so the song and the video that we're going to be watching and hearing today is the traditional prayer of saint francis lord make me an instrument of your peace and as beautiful as that prayer is to me it doesn't come close to generating the energy that we can generate when we pray i am an instrument so when you hear these words i just want you to in your mind translate it to this is true right now this is all i desire this is all i seek this is all i know and when that desire that seeking that knowledge becomes whole and full within us then we will truly be those instruments we will truly and completely surrender into the arms of the divine so that we can be played and there's nothing more marvelous there's nothing more satisfying than being played by the divine i'm sure we all know that experience in some way at some time to know that we have surrendered so completely that god is using us you know if if we were to say to another person use me that may not be such a positive thing but when we say that to god use me i am your instrument i give myself to you completely i don't want to do anything on my own i can do nothing on my own all i can do is surrender completely into your grace so there's a wonderful singer that uh, i know her name is tina malia she's becoming very popular these days i've been looking at some of her her videos online some of them are seen hundreds of thousands of times or more so i'm really happy because she's she's just an angel and uh, her voice this is the reason i asked her to sing this song because she just has such an angelic voice so this was recorded probably back in when was it like 2008 2007 maybe uh when we we were no it couldn't be there yeah, maybe it is that long ago uh when we were um, making the movie the moses code and tina was in town and i wanted this song to be in the movie it didn't end up being in the movie but i've always loved it so as i said last night when i was getting ready to go to sleep around midnight the idea came make a video of that song so you can share it in the morning so that's what i did so why don't you hold on and just enjoy this and then we'll talk about it
sin giving that we receive in pardoning that we are pardoned and in time to An instrument of peace. Linda, I was enjoying watching you just really feeling the energy. <laughs> That's what happens when when this becomes real. All you want to do is just expand and just shine. When you realize that you are an instrument of peace. In fact, just close your eyes for a moment. And we're going to See if we can feel the difference between that line, that prayer, make me an instrument of your peace. And we're going to say just a few times together, I am an instrument of your peace. Just say that with me. I am an instrument of your peace. Breathe in. I am an instrument of peace. Breathe in. I am an instrument of peace. I am an instrument of peace. I am an instrument of peace. Once more, I am an instrument of peace. What you're saying is true, but you have to want that. You have to seek that, and then you have to know that. It's very simple. It's all about a single desire. When we want only one thing, then we will realize that we only have one thing. There is only one thing to have, to know, to be, to allow any of it. There's only one. So that being said, I'm going to turn it over to our dear sister Vicki and see what she has to say about this. Morning, Jimmy. Morning, everyone. What a beautiful way to start the day. Thank you. So I am an instrument of your peace. What that immediately brought to me was the times that I find myself walking on water with no thought, just that feeling of limitless grace pouring through. For you, Jimmy, sometimes it's in the tub. For Big Teddy, it's when he's listening to music. It can come upon us at any time. We can just be walking down the street, but all of a sudden we're lilting. And I feel like those are the moments when we are those instruments of peace and we are broadcasting, we are playing heaven's song and whatever brings us there 
takes us. It gives us more direction. It gives us more joining. It gives everything. There's no looking for anything. It's fulfillment. It's just continue to walk in the water and let the grace pour out of us. And the only thing that ever seems to interrupt it, like a moment of, you know, like someone hits you or something, is if there's a blip somewhere on the screen and, oh, something that something came up that took me out of that stride, out of that flow. And then we have to have a forgiving mind and let it go. And then have that mind of, oh, with wonder, look at it instead of with judgment. Isn't that all it is? And then the wonder restores us right away. I'd rather dance in the flow. I'd rather walk on the water. I'd rather let the grace pour, however it pours. And that's it. It, yeah. And it, there's no more desire because it's desire fulfilled. Yeah. It's And I felt that the other day. I was just chopping vegetables. I was just making a quick little chili, little turkey chili. And I was chopping those vegetables and it was so perfect. <laughs> they were like so little and so perfect. And I was like lilting in it. And it's that experience again that it doesn't matter how it shows up. We are that instrument and we're broadcasting to the whole sonship that oneness and holiness and ease and, and God's love is our way of being. It is what we are and there's no seeking for it. There's the fulfillment of it. That's what experience is. The experience is the fulfillment of the desire um, in each of us. So I'm going to look around today. Where am I walking on water today? And if I'm not... Let me let that, whatever intrusion is, let it go quickly and return to that flow. So, mm -hmm. you know, Vicki, I, I love when, when you share your own blips, <laughs> with, especially oh, with the move, many of them, with family, and because it, it makes us real, it makes us accessible. We, we're all going through this. Well, I had a big blip yesterday. <laughs> so, my blip was with my father. And it was just this huge forgiveness opportunity uh, because my father expressed something regarding the upcoming election that made me think, are you an idiot? <laughs> You're a smart person. Like what is, what is going on? in that brain of yours that could possibly make you think that. And I mean, it, it was like, I, I just felt this anger come up, but I caught it. It's like, oh my God, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I mean, this is a challenge for all of us right now. This, uh, just the, the polarization, the, the, the inability to understand um, people who are perhaps on the other side of what I think, of, of what I believe. And, and then I, I lose touch with the fact that I'm one with this person. And it doesn't matter what you think or what I think. It's, it's about letting that go and let, let that drop. But it does also mean, as you said, noticing it. Not just denying it, but say, oh, well, that was a big blip. I really got pulled into that one. But now I can choose again. Now I can choose to be an instrument of peace, to, to fall back into the arms of the beloved and be played. And, and st stay there more and more consistently. That's the key. And, and you return every time you notice and then make another choice. So yeah, we all have those opportunities. We all have those blips. We just need to pay attention to them. And may maybe they're coming faster and harder right now, but that's okay too. That just means that we're ready. That means that the moment has come for us to really accelerate. So that's my story. How about you, Teddy? Do you have anything you want to share? I'll send you, like, I ask you to unmute. It might show up there. Oh, you're, probably your mouse is not working again. My mouse is not working. No, it's working. Can you hear me? 
<laughs> it's a very it's a very funny thing, thing. that 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 could be come a, a t-shirt or a mug or something my mouse is not working my mouse is not working <laughs> you know it's, talking about this election is really funny for me because it's um you know i ask for guidance just about everything so when i was going into the booth last for the last presidential election i asked who should i vote for because I didn't know. And my guides didn't tell me who to vote for, but they told me that Donald Trump was gonna win because he was the only person with the character and the inner fortitude to stand while the world fell apart around him. So I went in and voted for him. And when I tell people that Course in Miracles students tell me that I'm absolutely crazy, I can't be hearing the voice for Jesus because there's no way God and Jesus love Donald Trump. <laughs> And there's no way. So it's like they have Course in Miracles meetings where they talk about nothing but hating Donald Trump as they teach love your brother. And I think that it's the funniest thing in the world that, you know, and, I, and my question has been over and over again on Facebook to groups about, I mean, isn't it, I mean, isn't Donald Trump your brother too? Like, you know, isn't he our brother? Whether, and I, I see the whole thing. Like, like, there's no more importance in being president or vice president than there is in being any one of you right here right now, because we all have a function to fulfill in God's plan for salvation. And we're, we all fulfill that function equally. And even at the end of the course where Jesus goes, forget this book, not even this is real. It's all an illusion. Like we're all brothers, we're all already one. This is all over. And we can, I look at everything like that because of this perspective I've had from my experience. But it's really interesting to see how excluded Trump is from the belief that he could possibly be a good president or he possibly has another function or anything else because after all, he's Donald Trump. Look at him. So it's really, it's really wild. It really just makes me laugh. Um, and both are fulfilling, this whole election is doing nothing but bringing up stuff in people's minds and heart that they really need to look at That's for um, sure. about each and every one of us and, and learn that forgiveness is the bridge and nobody crosses the bridge alone we cross the bridge two by two really yeah. wow and we're all being asked to cross the bridge right now that's for sure <laughs> you know it reminds me of right around this time four years ago um <clears throat> right before the election I was uh, speaking at a conference in Phoenix, I think it was, Celebrate Your Life. And uh, Marianne was also, Marianne Williamson was also speaking there. And she was on the Friday night. I was on Sunday. I think she was the opening person. And on Sunday, during my talk, I was going to be focusing a big worldwide prayer vigil meditation that the highest good of the election be done. Now, it's not up to me to decide what the highest good is. It is mine just to be an instrument of the highest good, to seek the highest good. And at that point, I would have said, in my mind, Hillary is the highest good. Certainly not that, okay? Anyway, but I didn't, that wasn't the focus of the vigil. The focus of the vigil was just to, be, to ask that the highest good be done. Anyway, right before Marianne's talk, she was sitting over on the side and there's, you know, like a thousand people there or whatever it is. And, and, and I see her, I said, Hey, Marianne, she, she, you know, came over and gave me a hug. And she said, I hear you're doing a prayer vigil for Hillary. I said, well, no, it's not, it's not for Hillary. And, and I started to explain that it's for the highest, you know, blah, blah. And she grabs me by the soul. She said, listen, do you have any idea how important this is? Do you have any idea what will happen? And she just starts reaming me, just going, you know, almost yelling at me, telling me, you don't get it. You need to make this about Hillary. And as she's yelling at me, we hear over the microphone, over the speakers. So everyone, please, let's welcome Marianne Williamson. She, she realizes that she's just been announced and has to run from yelling at me onto the stage. <laughs> and teach there is only love. <laughs> and teach there is love and you know it's so easy to get pulled into this it's so easy 
And and I love Marianne, and I think Marianne has done some amazing stuff. It's you know her running for office, you know was was a, a huge step, but still the we can't compromise this. To be very honest with you, I I heard Marianne say many things during the election that I thought really compromised the truth because she was trying to be a candidate. She was trying to to say things that would would get the most people agreeing with her uh, rather than just saying the truth. That you know, is just heard, about forgiveness. I heard Marianne's first speech in Venice Beach when she wanted to run for office. And it was much better and more truthful and more honest than I ever heard her speak about the course. Her speech about her running for president was so truthful and so honest, I could feel it and hear it. And I always hear that other thing, like I always hear, you know, uh, that other thing when she talks about the course. But she really wanted to be president. And in fact, they suggested to Joe Biden that he take her as vice president, and they didn't. Yeah. Well, we have to be uncompromising with this. We have to seek only this. We have to become those instruments or really realize that we are those instruments already and just let ourselves be played, not think we can do it on our own, but we need to be played by the divine and be uncompromising. That's the key. So thank you, Teddy. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, let's see if there's anybody else in the room that would like to share anything. If you do, just let me know and I'll send you a little, you can just unmute yourself, I guess. Anybody? I'm just looking at those who have their cameras on. If anyone does not have their camera on and, and would like to uh, share anything, I think somewhere down here you can raise your hand. I'm sure you can find that little button if you want to do that, then I'll see you more easily. Or just unmute yourself. Anybody? Did we push some buttons this morning? <laughs> yes, Linda, go ahead. Um, thank you for your being the instrument of peace this morning. I just want to write, reiterate something that's from the course, but by it's only by honoring our brother and sister, whoever that is, are we ever going to find our way back home? Even though we haven't left, but that's our only way to do it. So I just want to emphasize that it's just by honoring one another, even though it's not easy at times, no matter who it is, who he or she is, that's our ticket home. That's for me, that's my, you know, my freedom ticket to, to live freely in this world. Yeah. So I just wanted to emphasize that today because that's what's in my heart. Thank you. That's so yeah. true. Yeah, it's like, what, what, what good do we do if we love those who love us? You know, the saint is the one who gives everything to the one who is most unlovable, to the one that is hardest to love. So for me, right now, that's Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> me, that's, and so I, I have to, if I'm going to be uncompromising, I have to notice that I can't deny it. I, no. I have to, to, to look at it and then say, no, Donald Trump is my brother. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is my opportunity. He and I can, can, can take hands right now and step into heaven because mm -hmm. he's nothing more than a symbol of my mind, of, of my unforgiving mind. And the greatest value anyone, whether it be Donald Trump or anyone else that I'm holding a grievance again, against can be is my willingness to let go of that and to see them as God sees them and take their hand and see only their perfection, not the imperfection. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to vote for him. No. <laughs> but it means I'm going to love him. And it means I'm going to take his hand as his brother. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's, that's a very good clarity that you've made. And you have my loving support, James. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs> Anybody else want to share anything? Okay, well, let's go to Namaste then. Let me see, where are you guys? Namaste. Oh, there you are. Hi, guys. Let me put you uh, in the spotlight. If, if you would take the virtual background off as well, Oh, Robert, sorry. So we don't see a bunch of ghosts <laughs> drifting across the screen. 
Okay. There we are. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everybody. I know some people have gone off to the hot springs again today. <laughs> Who would like to share? Anybody? Anybody feeling like it's a piece today? Okay, I'm going to call on Janet. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Janet. I was trying to hide. I know, but I can just barely see you. Just move over one chair. Okay, well, I can't because Lily's sitting here. <laughs> Good morning, Lily. What are you feeling well, today, Janet? Well, you know, that, that song you sung this morning is one of my favorites. It brings tears to my eyes every time. It definitely speaks to me within, absolutely. Um, and it's just crazy because I've been experiencing so many miracles every day. I had another one happen last night and totally random. Um, my, and as far as the, the home goes for the kids, um, my first goal is to raise money for the land. And um, She's talking about a town called San Pedro, which is near here, which is in such desperate need right now yeah and um so anyway it just seemed like god sent another person to me to open another door so all i ask is everybody keep us in your prayers and keep the children in your prayers because they really need a place to call home yeah well janet you are being a beautiful example of what it means to be an instrument of peace to be in service to love those who are in such need of love and it's not just the money or the food or anything like that that you bring but your love itself i know that when you and others go out to san pedro you're bringing your hearts open wide to embrace them love them and if you were just bringing food to them without the love what would that mean it would it would mean very little but when you go there and share from an open heart then you're truly being an instrument of peace. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, you're very welcome. One exciting thing is I just want to mention is that um, there's been a lot of interest, in, interest created and a lot of the Mexican young people uh, in their 20s, early 20s, um, we had three of them out there yesterday and they were just such an inspiration because they're young and they're energetic and they want to know. And they never knew about San Pedro. So they were really, um, quite excited to find out that there is something that they can do. And they read to them and uh, it was just awesome. It was just such an experience because they need that. They need their own kind. They need people that can speak their language and understand what they're going through. And then after they read the story, she had them draw a picture of their emotions. And it was just this, uh, so heart rendering because a couple of the kids were started crying, you know, just letting out their emotions. Mm -hmm. and, Beautiful. Yeah, so that's it's the more awareness we get out there, you know, and through the Mexican people themselves, you know, to know what's going on um, is huge. So, yep, that's what we're doing. So, so good. Thank you. Share with everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you for being an instrument of peace. Thank you for showing.